You know, if I had a dollar for every time I pulled the transmission on the ground like this, I probably could buy a lift. Today, we're going to be installing the ultimate drivetrain for any high-performance pickup truck. Something that'll handle a ton of power and abuse. Something that'll work well in pretty much any conditions, whether that's daily driving or out at the drag strip. And something that'll put down power to all four wheels all the time. Basically, we're putting together a bunch of parts that GM never intended to go together, but when it's all said and done, we are going to have ourselves the ultimate Copo truck. But before we get to installing the drivetrain parts, we have to get the welder out and build one really quick shift bracket, and then we can get to swapping out the 4L60 for the much stronger 4L80. Now, a lot of you guys gave me a hard time about wearing hearing protection while using a hammer the other day. Um, I never used to wear it, and I have definitely paid the price because my ears, they are definitely much, much more sensitive to loud noises, especially like grinding and, you know, cutting and banging with a hammer. So, uh, if you're young, a million old people told me this. They said, wear hearing protection or you'll pay the price. I didn't listen, and so now I have to wear it pretty much all the time. Can't use the cutoff wheel when the air compressor's going because the breaker will trip. Don't use the axle. So we're working with a modified 4L60 bracket to accomplish this. Normally on the later 4L80, there'll be a couple of casting bosses somewhere up in here, and there's a special bracket that goes down around the uh, wire harness here, but we're working with a 4L60 one. I'm actually gonna be using these two pan bolts. Um, when it's all said and done, I'm just gonna get a longer bolt that goes all the way up through, and it'll stick out just a little bit, and then I'll use a nut and a bolt to secure this. But for now, just kind of for mock-up and stuff, I'm just running the bolts in backwards. But this is more or less how our custom bracket is going to work. Make it pretty well down the front. See how this turns out. So while we wait for the paint to dry on our new custom shift cable bracket, I wanted to give you guys the gist of what we're doing today. Basically, we're swapping out the two major components of the drivetrain. We're replacing uh, the most mediocre four-speed automatic GM has ever built with what is probably the strongest four-speed automatic they've built, and that's the 4L80. So normally these come in like, you know, heavy duty trucks and buses and, you know, a, a wide range of vehicles. This one was rebuilt when I got it, but 
it was a stock rebuild. We took it apart. We did a bunch of other changes. You know, we dual fed the directs. We put a shift kit in and some other hydraulic tweaks. So anyway, we've got ourselves a rock solid transmission that'll hold up to probably 750 or 800 horse without a problem. The LSA supercharged 4.8 we have right now in the Copo truck only makes like 550, but in the future, we are gonna be making some pretty drastic changes to pump those numbers up quite a bit. I want this to be like a low to mid 11 second, you know, straightable setup. Uh, so we're gonna keep the LSA blower. We'll probably put a bigger motor underneath it at some point, but you know, just, we got some plans, but anyway, the short version is we want a drivetrain that's going to last for the long haul. So we got the 4L80, we have the NV149 all-wheel drive transfer case. Last time we rebuilt this, we put new bearings in, a new chain, new seals, and of course, we swapped out the input shaft with the 32 spline one that will mate right up to the 4L80. Um, let's see, so that's the big parts. We have the torque converter, that's probably like the secret sauce when it comes to making a great performing truck. This one's from Circle D. And if you want a great converter, give those guys a call. Um, tell them, it's easy to go to a website, but call them up on the phone. Tell them about your setup. You know, look, you've got a, a vehicle that weighs about this much, your rough horsepower, your gearing, your power adder, all these other things. Um, tell them what you have and what you want, and they'll spec out a converter that's exactly what you need because there's so many little differences inside there uh, but this is a 265 millimeter 32 to 3400 rpm stall speed i did go with a triple disc lockup this time it's a 3b which that has something to do with the i don't know the stator or the whatever inside um, we have a SFI certified flex plate that'll work directly with the uh, LS engine and the 4L80 without any extra spacers or anything like that needed. They also provide all the hardware and all that good stuff. So check out Circle D, those guys are awesome. I have the same, basically the same converter in the ugly truck and that one does amazing. So of course I wanted another one in the couple truck. Uh, a few other odds and ends you'll need if you're doing a 4L80 conversion in a Silverado. We have a different cross member. Um, you could modify the stock one, but it's so much easier just to call up Tyler from uh, DTR Fab. He builds these swap cross members for Silverados. It'll work with the right length of the different transmission and stuff like that. Uh, speed sensor, we have a different dipstick. And then, of course, you don't need mount motor mounts, but when i was doing a few launches at the track and stuff like that i can hear the transfer case like hit the bottom of the floor because you know the stock rubber mounts they kind of flex quite a bit and these atomic fab mounts they're made from polyurethane instead of rubber which means they're going to allow the engine to flex much less which hopefully will stop the transfer case from hitting the floor so anyway that's the parts that we're using um let's get the old transmission out So I'm taking the headers off the truck, which you don't necessarily have to take off, but it's gonna make my life a little bit easier because I gotta get the starter out to get the flex plate bolts out. And then of course the motor mounts are deep behind the header. So we'll just do that first, get it out of the way. So a lot of people actually ask what's in the fridge or the freezer in the shop. And in the summertime, the answer, well, lots and lots of water. And of course, lots of ice cream because it's hot outside. I like ice cream.
So normally when you swap from a 60E to an 80E, you've got to swap the flex plates. Um, the factory flex plate for the 80E is flat and it has a spacer behind it where the 60E is dished, but the uh, pattern is also different on the converter. The 60 has three bolts, the 80 has six, and they're a different bolt circle. So uh, we'll yank the stock one off and we'll put the Circle D one on, and the Circle D one obviously is made for a 4L80, but it's also much stronger. So I forgot this the first time I put the motor in last time, but on these ARP flex plate bolts, you want the ultra torque assembly lube under the head and then blue thread locker on the threads themselves. So it was actually the next morning. My major goal yesterday was to get the 4L80 installed in the truck and we accomplished that goal. Everything was fairly straightforward, you know, just your basic R&R &R job. Uh, the only tweak or modification that I had to make was with the dipstick and that's because of the LSA supercharger. Um, there's a little aluminum ear, which you might not be able to see, but it's right back there on the back of the supercharger. And I think it kind of protects the fuel rail in case of a crash. But anyway, all I had to do was twist the dipstick just a little bit to get beside that. And then um, that's all we had to do. We got the cross member in place just to sort of hold up the transmission overnight. I will have to take it out to get the lower bolts on the, that, or the nut where the transfer case attaches to the transmission. Uh, not a big deal. Everything with the DTR Fab cross member works great. And the best part is I didn't have to do any cutting or welding, so it just saves time, which is awesome. Um, it's now time to get the 149 installed. If you're doing a swap like this on a four wheel drive, going from a 4L60 to an 80, you will have to take apart your transfer case and swap out the input shaft because the 4L80 uses a larger 32 spline output where the 4L60 uses a smaller 27 spline. Um, so we got that one swapped out. And I had a million guys ask me on the 149 um, who makes that. That actually GM does not make that particular piece because they never put a, a NV149 behind a 4L80. That is made um, a guy named Tim at Modern Muscle Salvage in Michigan. Give him a call. Um, he's the one that built the coupler for the uh, Red Tide truck we built a while ago and this one as well. Um, Oh, the only other thing I wanted to mention was this cool seal driver I got from Merchant Automotive, part number 10325. Um, they sell this for Duramax trucks, like on the box they say it's for the 263 and the, let's see, uh, NP261 and 263 I believe is what they call for, but those transfer cases actually share the same output seal as a 246 and the NV149. So, as you can see there, the inner part of the seal is actually sort of a press fit onto the output shaft and it spins with the output and the outer part actually is stuck into the case and you've got to have those at the right depth and stuff like that. So this driver has a step machined onto it and then it kind of bottoms out on the inside there. So all you got to do is line that guy up and then just tap it in and it goes to the perfect depth every single time. Um, and they're like $40, so that's like an awesome deal you can't beat. And they also make those cool drivers for like, if you've got a Duramax front main seal or a rear main seal or different transfer case seals, they have a whole bunch of them. So check them out, Merchant Automotive. I thought it was a really awesome tool, uh, not sponsored by any means, but I just thought it was something worth sharing with you guys. So 
Now the only thing we've got to do is get the transfer case installed back in the truck, throw the new gasket on there. Um, and that kind of wraps up like the difficult part of the conversion. And then if we have time today, I think I'll tackle the motor mounts. Oh, also maybe worth noting is um, this is actually a cast iron rear extension housing instead of the aluminum one. I have seen the aluminum ones break. Um, you buy these used. I found this one on eBay, but this cast iron much stronger than the aluminum ones that like this year of truck normally would have come with. So uh, just a little extra peace of mind. So the last thing that we're going to take care of underneath here is bolting up the converter to the flex plate. And I think I've mentioned this before just about every time I install one of these, but you want about an eighth of an inch of a gap or pull ahead when you attach the converter to the flex plate. Um, Circle D gives you spacers or washers. There's a thin and a thick one. Um, and right now we have about 60 thou too much. They happen to provide a 60 thousandths thick washer. So we will put that through and that will give us the perfect eighth of an inch gap. See, that's the eighth of an inch you want right there. When I bought the Copo truck back in August of last year, this is like the vision that I had for the truck. It's finally come together. And just like uh, uh, Hannibal says, you know, I love it when a plan comes together. Like this is what I had in mind. And now I'm so happy that it's finally come together. We have ourselves a awesome supercharged LS engine. We have a bulletproof transmission to back it up. We have a killer all wheel drive system. And the best part about this for me is that it was all built using factory GM parts. Of course, you know, through like a 20 year spread or something like that. But um, that's why I call this the Copo truck because all the cool upgrades and mods that we've done are from factory vehicles. We just kind of mixed and matched a few different things. 
Um, of course, the ADE swap isn't quite done yet. All the mechanical you know, stuff is in. I still need to measure and have some drive shafts made. I need to do a few wiring changes, get the computer reflashed for the 4L80 instead of the 4L60. And then of course, just you know, the small stuff like top it off with fluid and then reinstall the headers and the exhaust and all the stuff that I took off. But this is now what I would consider to be the ultimate powertrain for a sport truck. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, you know, the motor mounts, I think we breezed over those really quickly, but basically that's, it's made from a firmer urethane rather than the soft rubber that the factory uses. The stock motor mounts just kind of let everything rock and roll a little bit too much. I think the transfer case was sitting the floor, but now the atomic fab urethane mounts are going to tighten that up nicely. Um, the DTR fab cross member worked great. Uh, really happy with how everything turned out and I'm just like it's almost a year in the making but it's so cool to see the Copo truck and how it's turned out and of course we are going to be adding more power in the future but we now have ourselves like the perfect foundation to continue to build on with just a few more engine mods we are going to get exactly where we want to be um, for me it's Friday afternoon and right now it's like 90 degrees inside the shop, which kind of sucks. I've been drinking water all day long. I've only had one or two ice creams, so I'm going to call it quits. But thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, I'll try to put a few different links down in the comments section or the, um, the description below the video. If you guys are looking for any of the parts that I've used today, um, come back soon. We'll be doing who knows what. Something fun, though. Mm -hmm. You guys hear me moaning and groaning down here i just cracked a rib i believe when i was cranking those final motor mount bolts tight so now every time i move it hurts that's all right onward and upward <laughs>